Oh boy, you like roller coasters? Let me explain what's happened here last week. Got Ladybug, got her coat on this morning. She's keeping nice and snuggies. Come on, Ladybug, come on. Had to make some purple extensions there so the Velcro would fit around her old belly. It's working, huh, Ladybug? So, the roller coasters. Let me tell you about it. Hello folks, Jason Crestman, JC's Bees, your Central Ohio beekeeper. Hey, got a question for you. You like roller coasters? You like the up and the down and the up and the down? Because boy, I tell you, the bees have been on one the last week. Today is Friday, let me see here, to February 4th, and what was it, the first or the second? Not real good keeping track of dates, but it was Wednesday, today's Friday. Um, we had, or no, it was Tuesday. Tuesday, I think. Um, we had some 50 degree weather. The bees were out flying. I actually got a little clip here I wanna show you of the bees flying. And uh, it, was, it was real nice for them. They were out pottying and spreading their wings, stretching a little bit. And then yesterday, it all hit the fan for a lot of us. I know a lot of people were checking their hives on Tuesday or Wednesday when we hit that 50 degree mark. And then all of a sudden, another cold front came in, pushing a big old storm. Started out here yesterday as uh, pretty much all rain, and then it turned to ice about eight o'clock in the morning. And well after eight o'clock last night, it was still icing. Um, so we got very little snow, but we got lots of ice. Here, look on the vehicle. Let me show you here real quick. This side didn't get it as much as the other side, but you can see the ice coating on the vehicle there. Let's look at the other side. This is the side that got the brood of it. You can tell the whole vehicle is covered. I got that one thawing so we can get out if we need to. Um, it's preheating now. I'm going to clean the windows up and get the rest of the snow off of her, but boy, it was brutal. I know up in uh, Northern Ohio, they got buried in snow, but they didn't get the ice that we did. So it was kind of a thing where it depended on where you were as to what you got. And this hit a lot of the people here in the United States. So I imagine there's probably a pretty good chance that a lot of you were affected by this same storm. You can see it's snowing now, but it's not supposed to accumulate too much. I'm, Next two or three hours, it's gonna fade away, and this is what we'll have. Let's take a quick look at the hives here. You can see about how much snow we got. Um, the majority of this all melted in the 50 degree weather, at least what was on the roofs of the hives. Um, I did notice when we had that 50 degree weather that I lost two colonies um, down here in the back row. And what I'd like to do is show you a little clip of that because I thought it was a little bit interesting as to why they died. So check out this clip. I want to apologize for any background noise, but I'm just using my phone to record this little clip. It's 50 degrees right now. You can see we still got a good layer of snow on the ground. Um, bees are out flying. All the hives look good except for... The two nukes down there on the end, they are dead. And what's really weird about that, well, just, let me show you real quick. I noticed it on this one. Okay, so down here on this end, we've got the fondant patty that I put on over a month ago. Or down here, and it might be hard to see, but here's the cluster of bees. It's from in between this frame, here, here. So we got three seams with a nice wide cluster. I mean, it stops down here and then goes all the way to this divider. But what's weird is the bees died here because they didn't have any food. Right here on this end is the food. Now, if we lift the fondant patty up, if I can get a hold of it. 
you see the moisture on the bottom of that label there so what I think I may end up doing for our experiment is I'm gonna go ahead and pull the fondant patty out of this colony and what we'll do is we'll see if the fondant patty is what's adding the moisture so this is colony number 46 dead the one next to it lost its number probably like last week it's down in the snow but it's dead also so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and remove this fondant patty i'll uh, fold the flap back down stick it back in the refrigerator until a colony needs it but i thought that was kind of strange that the colony moved to the end where there was no food versus staying where there was food now did they move not knowing there wasn't any food on the other end or was it the condensation on this wrapper or the moisture that forced them to move over hmm what do you think so as i promised i also got some video look at the ice on this tulip look at that nasty stuff luckily um, we didn't lose power with all the ice we had and for some reason a lot of it didn't stick to trees I know there's a lot here on this limb, but for the most part the trees didn't get very heavy You can see we've got a lot of pine trees And the pine trees are the first indicator of heavy tree limbs because those pine needles They just absorb the water it sticks to them before you know it. They're laying on the ground But anyway, I wanted to uh, show you what it looked like the other day when the hives were flying and uh, the bees were all out. So take a quick look at this. So you can see the bees were pretty active the other day and now it's all quiet again. So that's where the roller coaster that I was talking about, the up and the down, you know, that the, you get this warm weather, the bees start to move around in the hive and then the temperatures drop again and the bees need to cluster back together in order to survive and they need to do that around food. So if your bees happen to move, during this warm spell and they didn't get back to food before they clustered, it could be devastating for you. Hopefully that wasn't the case. Um, this is a very crucial time of year. It's, it's actually a very hard time of year for the bees because of the constant up and down, up and down with the temperature. And that's not gonna change any until we get to spring. Matter of fact, it's probably gonna get worse before it gets better. The hills are gonna get steeper the drop-offs are gonna get steeper, and then you're gonna go right back down and right back up. So that's just how it is in the winter, um, especially come February. February to March, everything's in the middle of a transition, and uh, it takes a little while for us to actually transition into spring. I know we start to get spring-like weather sometimes in March, um, Definitely in April, we're starting to get more of those summer-like or spring-like days, but it's usually mid to late May before the cold weather leaves us, and uh, we can start doing things in our bees. So anyway, I just wanted to share with you um, some of the events that's been going on here with the weather and talk about the roller coaster the bees are on. Now, if you're in question of whether your bees are around food, the best thing you can do is run out throw on a piece of newspaper on top of your frames, throw on a feeding shim, and add some dry sugar. It's called the mountain camp method. And besides, snow's hitting me in the eyes, besides actually uh, feeding the bees, it collects and absorbs moisture in the hive. So there's another benefit to the mountain camp method. So that's about all I got for today, folks. Um, stay in, stay warm, stay off the roads, let the road crew do what they need to do. And uh, that's my plans for today. Um, stay safe out there, stay warm, and we'll see you all next week, folks.
Thanks for watching JC's Bees. Ladybug, is you ready to go in, girl? Come on, let's go. Daddy, I'm ready to go in. Daddy, I'm ready to go in. I'm ready to go in, Daddy. Come on, let's take your clothes off. Let's take your coat off. Come here. Let's take a good ball hole still. <laughs> we had to make some Velcro extensions for Ladybug so that this coat would fit her. <laughs> the purple's like the extensions. You ready to go in? Daddy, you made me naked. You made me naked, Daddy. Let's go. Have a good day, folks.